Hello, welcome to the Knife Lab. So, um, we are going to round up all the steels I have cut, tested, and provide thoughts on all of them. All of them. Now, check the FAQ for how these tests work. If you're someone who does not agree with my testing, then leave your dislike and good day to you, sir, because we are going to have a nice time here talking about steels. But if you are uh, not on board with steel testing or my steel testing or whatever, this is not the video for you, friend. Go and be happy somewhere else. The internet is too full of possibilities to sit on videos which are making you sad. So, goodbye to you and go and watch something from one of your other chosen content providers. Now, I'm going to go through the whole list, said alphabetical, but a lot of these still start with numbers. So, numerological slash alphabetical order, starting with 01. 01 steel I tested on a Tyndale knives. It's a very common steel in custom knives, in fixed blade knives. Uh, and it generally seems to have slightly better edge retention than 1095. That is what my test showed at the very least. But again, older steels generally highly variable in heat treatment. People are gonna have different ways of treating them for different effects. Tyndale has a very good treatment, maintaining good edge retention and good toughness. You can see him cutting bolts in half with his TKHT 01 steel. Um, 109 cuts it did with a work sharp edge for me. Um, 1095, quite revered, classic outdoor steel. Uh, I've tested on an SE and a Schrade and a GEC and then the Crovan version on the K-Bar. So 1095 is yeah, held you know, about you know in the last quarter of the, of the first 100. So 75 from SE, uh, 69 from Schrade, and then 87 with the Crovan. These are with work sharp edges. And then uh, with a pocket knife, I put a really steep edge on it with the Tormek here, and it went 155 times with a 12 degree edge angle. So very, very stable, fine grained steel that um, has a lot of potential and a lot of capability in it. You can push that up to 64 on the Rockwell. All the stuff I've tested would be about 58 or 59, I would say. I think SE's is 57. So generally a steel that is made for toughness, but nothing wrong with 1095. Um, you might wonder why SE charges so much for it. I think it's more of a matter of warranty. If you don't want that great warranty, you can get very similar knives under the Rat series from Ontario. Um, that just won't be replaced every time you break them. Next, 10V. 10V is a very scary steel. It's got a lot of vanadium in it. It's not a sharpener's friend. I've tested it on two different Spyderco K2s and it got very, very good results on the Worksharp test. Remember, Worksharp testing, the highest I've been with them, with a Worksharp on my 20 degree angle, is Maximet doing about 560 or something like that. Uh, 10V was the top for a long, long time on 389 cuts through rope until it no longer held a paper slicing edge. So really, really advanced stuff and still one of the best steels with the work sharp edge. I just haven't had it again to test it with all my new means of testing. I did get it and put a toothy um, edge on it with a Lansky system. Remember the Lansky system? I was using that for a while and it got to 550 cuts, which was good for what was probably a pretty basic sharpening job by moi. My skills are in flux as well, so that is another complicating factor for my tests. But yes, 10V is one of the heavy hitters for sure. Um, in terms of its uh, other attributes, it also is fairly stainless and fairly tough as well, I think, because I was using it as a barbecue knife on my K2, and yeah, it was doing pretty good, pretty good. But that's anecdotal, not within the, think of the test. 12C27, I've had on a few different steels. Um, it seems to be a you know mid mid level edge retention steel um, for the non powder steel. So on my Greystone custom knife, it cut 85 times. On my Mora knife with the Scandi grind, it cut. 88 times, um, and that was a stone sharpened Scandi finish. So not really usually what I do. I'm not the best at that. But yeah, 12C27 uh, will be you know a moderately long edge for what is probably gonna be a lower cost knife for you. Uh, my Greystone's obviously not a lower cost knife, but it's a custom knife, and it's, um, I, I got this still for other attributes, because I'm often out amongst water and things, and I just like the stainlessness of it, and I like how it's quite easy to resharpen. So there's that. And then I tested um, OpenL's version, which is a modified version with quite a bit less carbon. And that I then did quite a bit less in terms of edge retention, looking at about 55 on the workshop edge. And even when I pushed it as far as I could with a Tormek, 13 uh, degree edge angle, cut 110 times. So lower performance from the OpenL 12C27. 
14C28N is the next one on the list. This is what I'm always going on about is this should be the new 8CR13 MOV steel. Certainly seems very accessible, has a little bit longer on the edge retention just with more standard edges. And yes, when I put more extreme edges on it with the Tormek, it went really, really high. So um, where are we? On the rake, I got it to 215 rope cuts with a 12 degree edge, um, but then I had to um, I had to do it again because when I did it without a micro bevel, it failed after 15 cuts. So I had to stabilize that a little bit with a micro bevel. But yes, uh, very good potential on this steel. I've got it up to, um, so 88 on the workshop, 105 on Lansky. You're getting around sort of slightly better than VG10, maybe about the same depending on the treatment. And this is very slight. So not quite up to say what the, I think the best non-powder steel I've had is the 154 CM. Um, and yeah, it's definitely sort of around that mid to upper tier of the, of the ingot or the standard steel so done you know, super powder metallurgized electro static slag you know all that stuff micro melty none of that's the stuff for a pretty basic steel it's pretty darn good 14c28m tested a whole bunch of knives in that one more garbergs rakes real steels um yeah good stuff uh, 154cm is the longest lasting of the non stainless steels no, I'm wrong actually, but of the pocket knife steels, it is the longest lasting so far. 124 cuts on the workshop. Uh, I got the work. I got the um, 20 degree edge with a V bevel on a Tormek, and I got to hold 150 cuts before it was no longer slicing paper. And then um, I've had, um, yeah, I think Nylox was a little bit better than that again, but I'll get to Nylox under N for Nylox. Right. 204P, that's an analogous steel to M390, and I had it in a Spyderco Southern, which was just on loan, so all I did was work sharp it, cut the rope 321 times, definitely putting it in the upper sort of 10 or so steels with workshop edges. So from what I can tell, not extensively tested, very, very similar to the M390, and that's kind of what the recipe says as well, so good job. Uh, 20CV, again, another one of those similar steels to um, M390. Uh, 351 it got on a uh, Benchmade Griptilian. So a little bit higher than the um, than the 204P, but not so much that it couldn't just be ruled out to how I was cutting on the day or something like that. Again, one guy doing one type of test, some variables. Uh, 300 series stainless, that's just what I put as the butter knife steel. I sharpened a butter knife one time, tried to cut with it, cut three times through rope, and then it was just completely blunt. So. So what happens when you get a steel that is not made for edge retention and try and make it edge retaining? It doesn't work. Um, the 3V, I've done a fair bit of 3V. Uh, I did on my Bravo from Bark River and my Cold Steel Master Hunter, very similar numbers. So um, 209, 198 cuts for the Cold Steel and the Bark River respectively. Uh, that's a pretty good result for a steel that is primarily bred for toughness, but also holding a pretty decent edge too. And then I did some pretty extensive testing with my Survive Knives GSO. Um, the factory edge, 85. Numbers between, and then for the, when I actually started sharpening it, numbers between, you know, 195, 200, 207. Very, very similar. Uh, the highest I could get was with a polished edge, got to 290 cuts through rope. Slightly better than the toothy edge, which is 240 cuts through rope. So I'd recommend polishing your 3V as best as you can. I kept it at about a 17 degree edge, which I think is still kind of strong enough to doing your survive knives type tasks. But yeah, 3V is excellent stuff. And uh, although it's not in the upper stratosphere of edge retaining, it's pretty good for being a balanced steel for sure. 40 CP, I've tested it in one single knife. It was a loner, so I didn't want to do too much crazy to it. Um, Buddy Chris sent along a strider in it. It cut 285 times through rope before it no longer sliced paper, and that was the workshop edge. So 40 CP is good with me. Uh, 4116, tried a couple of different cold steels in that one. Uh, workshop and factory edges from cold steel. So workshop with a, a 20 degree 67 cuts and factory edge on the Cold Steel Working Man cut 58 times. And then the Ontario Wraith, I really steepened that angle to 13 degrees, shallowed that angle to 13 degrees, cut 140 times. So some potential in 4116, it seems to be fine and tough enough to sustain a shallow angle. So maybe do that with your 4116 steel. Not bad stuff at all because it is generally cheap stuff, depending on how it's treated. 
420 HC. All sorts of testing with that one. And I have noticed a pretty decent curve towards Paul Boss's treatment being better. So with the Workshop, Paul Boss treated 420 HC, got to 67 cuts compared to what is usually about 44, 48, 50 from brands like Gerber and what not. Um, and it was all the planer when I used Buck's other 420 HC, the stuff that is not from Paul Boss and the Chinese knives, cut through the rope 40 times with a workshop edge. So 420 HC is definitely entry level stuff. But if you get a Boss heat treatment of it, it's probably gonna last a little bit longer, approaching say your VG10s and whatnot. 440A, I've tried two knives in 440A, can't really get good results of it um, from it. And that was with uh, a workshop edge on one and a Tormek edge on the other. It's just pretty basic stuff. Um, there might be some dream edge for it that I've, I'm yet to come across it. Um, 440A is definitely not um, well regarded generally, not by me either. One of them was a Z Hunter, which shows you what kind of companies are still using 440A. You'll see it in Boca Magnums and really cheap knives. Um, just move on, spend a little bit of money, get something in at least 420HC or something. So, I mean, yeah, it's probably fine. It's still a cutlery steel, so I don't know. But yeah, you're gonna have to definitely maintain it a little bit more. Uh, 440B from a Cutco Camp Knife, 50 from a workshop, on a workshop edge. Again, pretty basic stuff. Um, that was a really expensive knife, or a more expensive knife, which was a bit dumb because um, yeah, definitely wasn't holding the edge like a knife of its cost should have been doing. 440C, I haven't really done probably enough in for 440C. There are this, they speak of a 440C that is, you know, at super steel level and it's really, really good. I'm yet to find it. Um, the highest result from 440C I've got so far on the workshop testing is 77 cuts and that was with a line steel. I've actually done a fair bit of 440C. Uh, Victorinox, 57. Kizzle Yar, 75. And another Kizzle Yar, 70. So that's getting towards a bit of a, a, bit of a plateau there. Um, I tried some Acuto 440 I'll talk about later. It seemed to do a little bit better, but from the 440C I've had, it's definitely, um, the stuff they're adding to make it into things like 154CM definitely seems to be of benefit. 4V, my Bark River Kephart 5. Uh, 4V was an amazing steal in that knife. I just used their factory edge because I didn't want to ruin it. And it cut 475 times through rope. Uh, and for a steel that is, you know, fairly tough apparently, even though I broke the tip off of mine, but that was my fault. Um, 4V uh, seems to be a definite upgrade in edge retention from 3V. Uh, I don't really do toughness testing. I don't, I'm not happy with a way of doing it in a testable and comparable way. But yeah, if it's anything near as tough as 3V whilst having that big boost in edge retention, which is, you know, almost 70% more. Um, pretty impressive. I reckon we'll start seeing 4V a little bit more V. Mm. Uh, 5160, um, yeah, tough still, not edge retaining still. My Ontario Bushcraft field knife, with a workshop edge cut 59 times through rope before it was no longer super sharp. And um, yeah, I mean, it's good for my RTAC 2, great on that. I probably wouldn't get a smaller knife in it. Um, it'll sharpen easily and it's tough, but uh, I think there's better things that do tough in small knives anyway, like even something like 01 or 1095, you probably seem to get a little bit more edge retention. And I mean, how much tough do you actually need in a small knife? For a big chopper though, I've got a Kukri coming in 5160 and I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, 5CR15 MOV in a Gerber Index. Um, well, that one performed 37 times. You know, it's a similar recipe to 4116, but it just seems to be treated like idiots or by idiots who, when, when it's used in knives because it never seems to last very long at all. Um, 7CR17, um, I tested it in the Bear Girl Survival Knife, probably pretty soft, 35 times. Um, I haven't done extensive testing on much of the CR stills. 80 CRV2, I did a proper long um, edge retaining video and different toughness testing. I've tested it in all different ways on my Tarava Yakari Puko. And uh, that is a great steel. Um, that is a really good, uh, it's definitely a cut above 1095, probably about, if not a bit better than 01 in terms of its edge retention and definitely seems tough and strong and actually held a pretty good um, resistance versus rust as well. So I'm pretty impressed with that as well when I did my rust testing just recently. Very, very cool steel 80 CRV2. I like it. 8 CR 13 MOV from four different knives, three different knives, but six different tests. Variable, but with workshop edges, you're getting from between 39 to 
56-ish. But then when I thinned it out, I can get a really nice edge with a, um, what is it, my Atmos. Uh, we put it to 12 degrees, polished it a bit, put a bit of a, bur a bevel on it, a, at least a, a stropped bevel on it. Um, cut 135 times. So, you know, these bad steels or these low-end steels, if you treat them right, then you can get pretty decent performance out of them. It's just uh, a matter of whether you have the tools or ability to do that. So, you know, I'm not, I, I've sort of moved away from being a complete steel snob about these things because um, I think they're all within, cap as long as they're treated properly to be cutlery steels, I think there's this capability in most, as long as you're not paying too much for them. It's yeah, 14 MOV steel. It's um, a slight, oh, it's about the same performance really as 8CR13 when you look at the whole overall performance of things. And then 9CR18 MOV, a little bit more carbon, seemed to gain a little bit more edge retention to 72 cuts on one of those uh, Chinese random branded knives. So that was 9CR. Um, yeah, I, again, I don't really do too much with the Chinese steels because most of the knives I buy don't have them. A2, I tested a single A2 knife um, with from LT Wright, my Genesis Scandi, 216 cuts. Scandies are hard, they're all a bit different angle, they're all just a bit different. I'm not the best at Scandi sharpening. I have navigated away from doing much Scandi testing. I'll test a Scandi knife, but probably not fair for comparison. But A2, if that's a non-powder steel, it seems to be a pretty good holder as long as it's treated well. And most of the guys that are using A2 these days, like Bark River and LT Wright, are gonna treat them properly. Acuto 440, we're into the named steels. So this was a really good steel, I just tested it recently. Definitely VG10, if not slightly better level performance, according to my numbers, uh, 80 on a workshop test. I mean, Kaiser's got a bit better on a, work on a workshop testing with VG10, but only slightly. So for a budget steel on the Tangram series, uh, for Acuto 440 looks really, really good to me. It's got, I got it up to 180 when I did a mirror polished finish on it. Um, 90 from the factory edge, good stuff. Um, good stuff for Kudo 440 for a budget steel. Absolutely. Uh, AEBL, I tested a DB Blades AEBL knife. Um, this is good stuff. It seems very much like, actually reminds me a little bit of um, the, uh, what was it? Um, the RWL 34, just a little bit. Um, in just in how it acts and performs. It's sort of a slightly higher than average stainless steel, um, but still uh, popular with custom makers, obviously, because I guess available and easy to machine and all that sort of good stuff. So AEBL, haven't tested it extensively though, so probably limited stock in what I can share about it, but certainly made a good first impression. And that's really all I've had from AEBL so far. AN58, this is a steel that the Spanish maker Nieto uses, and it just seemed like a pretty basic 440 series steel, 53 cuts. Shrug a little bit. They sort of make it out to seem like they've done all this magic to it, but I don't know. Didn't do that great for me. Aogami Blue. Really impressive carbon steel. These Japanese kitchen knife steels, they'll rust like crazy if they're not laminated and you leave them out. But I had a Higo no Kami in Aogami Blue with a workshop edge you cut 140 times. So for a basic steel that is pretty much just carbon, uh, really, really good result, and I mean, that's just the rule, I guess, put more carbon in it, harden it up a bit more, uh, but again, really easy to sharpen, really impressive Aogami steel, and when I unleashed it, back when I was unleashing steels with a 14 degree edge, yes, that would have done it, uh, 210 cuts, so for a, such a cheap knife, those Higos cost nothing, getting excellent edge retention from Aogami Blue. AUS 8, I've extensively tested AUS 8 over one, two, three, four five, six, seven different knives. With a workshop edge, it's gonna cut pretty much between 56 and 60. So pretty narrow result there. Pretty low um, performer with a workshop edge. Got it up on my Almar Falcon to 125 cuts with a 13 degree edge. Um, I've yet to do some polished mirror edges on it, but um, they'll probably get about the same, maybe, maybe a little bit less because the angle is not as extreme. But yeah, it's, 8CR 13-ish, it just is, it's it's fine if you're sh happy to sharpen and happy to maybe put a steeper edge on it, but yeah, more it's more gonna be the blade stock and the blade geometry doing the cutting with something like that. If you're gonna get a good, gonna get a good AUS 8 knife, it's gonna be something like an Almar that's gonna be supported in a few different ways rather than just having this steel. BD1, Cold Steel's BD1 uh, was a really good performer. Um, 
almost catching 154 cm. Um, it's a, is it a nitrogen steel? No, it's not a nitrogen steel. I think it's a micro melt steel. Um, but yeah, it's good result, 112 cuts, work sharp edge. Very impressive. Uh, yet to test much more of it though. So again, a first impression, but a good one. Oof, BDZ1 on the Gerber Strong Arm. I tested it twice with the same knife, 76 on the workshop. And then when I put a Lansky edge on it, um, 111 cuts. So it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, it's fine for a still pretty cheap knife. Uh, I wish Gerber would make the Strong Arm in it exclusively because it does seem to perform a bit better than their 420HC. Still nothing world beating, but tough and fine edge retention. Good with me. You'll see that most of these steels, like as long as they're not overpriced, then I'm happy with most of them. It's just the really shit ones, like the nameless ones, the 440As and stuff like that. Right, Boss 420HC, I touched on this earlier, got better results with this, like distinctively better than standard 420HC. Must be a bit harder or finer along the edge or something going on there. 67 cuts on the workshop, about 25 more than standard 420HC, which when you're talking with numbers that low, it's about a 40% improvement, so. Pretty good, good job. PB, Paul Boss. Openels, carbon steel, C75, cut 66 times on the workshop edge. That's fine for such a cheap knife, no worries. Thin it out a bit, you've got a nice thin slicey blade, it'll probably last a little bit longer. Good first impression. <laughs> Some cast iron from one of those Korean eBay knives, um, cut 20 times and then was pretty dull, so. I don't know if it was actually cast iron, it's just what it was marketed at. Sometimes when I get one of those random knives, all I can say is what it's saying it is. I can't test it, I don't have that means, so. And then, moving on from that, I uh, had a ceramic knife, uh, which cut 100 times through the rope with its factory standard edge. Ceramics will do pretty well, um, and then they're really hard to get back to sharp, because you need to use specific diamond stones to get them sharp, and all that sort of thing. Um, they haven't really won me over as a replacement for steel, that's for sure. Ceramic, but 100 times, I guess that's good. Cases chrome vanadium, 77, 70, 75, workshop edges, pretty good. Um, so that's, um, you know, a moderately quality carbon steel for sure, it's in 1095 realms, it's no worries at all, uh, it'll tarnish on you, but good stuff, I liked this case CV, it's just fine. Uh, the CPM154 on the JX6. Didn't end up being CPM154, it ended up being A2. And that cut 191 times, making, because that was a mislabeled knife. That was awkward, wasn't it? But uh, that A2, or CPM154, it was A2, because it was stained, I tested it, and they confirmed later that it had been accidentally mislabeled. It cut 191 times, which makes A2 the best performing non-powder steel. So, good job A2. Bit of a shame it happened in that way, but it's a good result. Right, uh, crew wear steel on my Mako Creely Blades knife. Crew wear is excellent. Crew wear is like a cut above 3V in most aspects I've found. Uh, it seems to hold an edge for longer, be about as tough, be a little more stainless even. Um, good, good stuff, the crew wear. Um, it didn't hold as long as the 4V, but that 4V was with Bark River's crazy thin Convex grind, so I'll have to test that someday soon. But anyway, crew wear is an excellent, excellent blade still, and um, I think others have had the same experience. I saw Dutch Bushcraft, I think Martin had a very similar experience. It was one of their top three or so um, when they did their edge retention on their giant rope, which I love that giant rope, man. So fucking cool. Um, so yeah, crew wear, you've got a knife in crew wear, you're doing pretty good. Right, next page D2 steel. This is a tricky one. I'm not happy with my D2 testing so far. I've got some weird D2. And the thing is, I'm probably not getting it from the right people. So I've had it from Kizilya, which didn't perform well. The workshop Kizilya Biker cut 25 times. Even the Lansky, it cut 53 times with a 20 degree V edge. With a toothy edge, I got it up to 80. It was just underperforming like crazy. My Boca Vox Roll, probably the most... Um, Nah, this sounds bad. I mean, I had some from Viper that even, that didn't really perform well either. Like, I got it to 95 from Viper using a Tormek. Um, the Ontario Rat 1 with a workshop edge, that was the first test I did. 
cut 120 times through rope. So that's probably about representative. You could probably trust Ontario and Boca to have pretty decently worked out D2. When I put it to the max from a Boca, I cut 208 times. So D2 has potential to be a really heavy hitter. And probably one of the, you know, if it's done right, it's probably still one of the best non-powdered steels. Um, you probably need a bit of a toothier edge on it, um, just from general, you know, anecdotal stuff, people saying it's better with Toothy. Um, they did they did powder it for a while, but it just wasn't particularly good, the um, CPM D2. It wasn't what people, it di didn't you know, meet any of the best aspects that D2 is capable of. So if you've got some D2, rough it up just a little bit, put it at about you know, 17 degrees, you probably have yourself a good time. LMAX, tested LMAX twice from ZT and from Microtech. So with a workshop ZT, it did 236 times, putting it comfortably above, say, S30V, and not quite up towards the M390 levels of good stainless steels, or excellent stainless steels, but definitely a great steel, Elmax. Uh, and then Microtech, I did a Lansky edge on it, 20 degrees, because I didn't want to steepen it, because I was learning the knife, and it cut 320 times. So, good results for Elmax. And Elmax is another one of those steels, a bit like crew wear, it seems to be pretty versatile for yeah, most things, and it's actually quite stainless as well. So tough, stainless, edge retaining. I like Elmax a lot. H1, I couldn't get much joy from H1. I tested it over a couple of months and just was not a performer for me, the H1. Um, they say, you know, there's this rumor that it hardens up over years or something, but I just wasn't seeing it. It's so much better um, that it's been replaced uh, largely by LC200N, although it is still a little bit more stainless, I understand, than LC200N. So H1 is good. Time for a bit of an intermission, I think. HAP 40. My first HAP 40 test with the Spyderco man bug, and I'm not perfect. I don't think I did that test right. Is what it is. Sorry. Uh, I used this knife that was too small, so the edge was getting used more rapidly than if I just used a slightly bigger knife. So when I moved up to a slightly bigger knife, the Dragonfly 2, it went from 173 cuts from the uh, man bug to 300 cuts using the whole edge of the Dragonfly, because usually I'm using about an inch and a half of, of edge. So that was a good result. Hat 40 is a great steal. Uh, and then with the same knife, I unleashed it a little bit using a lance gear to 17 degrees, 415 cuts. So Hat 40, good steal. Infi, Infi. I couldn't quite test Infi the way that I wanted because I had it on a bussy that was just a big thick knife. I got it pretty sharp. Um, I push cut tested it a little bit. Um, yeah, it was just a different test, a bit of an odd test. Bussy people, it's another one of those subcultures in knife that I just get a bit of a headache dealing with. Um, they're really, really dedicated, and I just can't be that dedicated to an inanimate thing. And so I got too much. Yeah, there was. I didn't want to open up that can of worms. I tested it because I had the knife and sort of put it back in its box. I think Infi is fine. I think it's a still made for toughness obviously because it's made for those knives that they uh, you know saying you can open up you know like you can open a car with a bussy without having to use the door handle all that sort of stuff they say about it um yeah i didn't really want to wade much further into it a bit like the survive knife stuff when you get these really dedicated fan bases it kind of makes me back away from the, the knives in general just a little bit um so yeah it was a um just a little bit um, like, ah, oh, I'll test it, but, and I sort of said it even at the start of the test, hey guys, this isn't, this is just a thought experiment. So I'll show you, but chill out, and people still didn't chill out. It's one of those things, there's a few dives that I've tested that I've got angry emails about. You know, YouTube comments are one thing, you're already watching the video, you can be like, bad, fuck you, yeah. That's fair, like, I did, no one cares. But when people take the time to write you an angry email, you're a bit like, ugh, no, thank you. Um, that's the anger that I, can't comprehend, so I'm uh, not going to particularly play with Infi too much more, just because it's, uh, nah, it's not in pocket knives, it's not in any of the knives that I like, so, eh. Um, junk steel, I tested some Z Hunters, <laughs> the Z Hunter steel, this is just about the stainless steels that just aren't named, they're just 
they, they're in your crappy knives that you buy. They, they don't perform well. So they get between 9 and 15 cuts. No matter what edges I put on them, they just suck. So if your steel isn't properly made for knives and properly treated to be cutlery steel, it probably sucks. K390, on the other hand, does not suck. K390 is probably one of the best steels going, I think. K390 is insanely long lasting with edges. Um, what did I get up to? With a lance gear, I got up to 520 cuts, which I know I've destroyed that with the crazy edges. Say I got M390 to 800 and something using a 12, 12 degree bevel on a Tormek with a thousand grip. For a lance gear edge, from what I was doing at the time, that was, I think, the highest. So I could get it better than the comparable edges, say with M4, with um, S110V, I think, nowhere close. Uh, or they were, you know, still in the low four, on the high 400s. The K390 is, um, without doubt, I think, probably in the top three of the steels that I've tested so far. Yeah, I'd say if it goes Rex, Maximet, probably K390 in terms of just capability to get a good lasting edge on it, for sure. Excellent stuff. That was an Aspideco Police 4. I tested it three times with three different edges, and it was good in all of them. Right. Um, it, although the first edge was the factory, and it got 240. But that's just factory edges. They're generally not everything you want them to be. L6 in my Ford Peasant, cut 80 times. L6 is a basic carbon steel that's been around for ages, and that's about what you'd expect. L6, good stuff. Like, if, if you're going to get a bigger knife in it, I think it's good too. It's quite tough. Um, nothing wrong with L6 at all. Um, it's just one of those things I haven't had too much experience with, so there we go. Um, laminated COS from Falkneven. Not a powdered steel. Again, 176 cuts with a work sharp edge. It's pretty good. It really is. Um, for not a powdered steel, um, COS is... Is it the best? It might even be the best. No, A2 is better, but second best. Geez, I used to think the 154cm was, but I'm forgetting about these more random steels. I only did it once with my... I didn't like that knife, the Falkneven PC. It was a crappy knife. It's too thick behind the edge, but I thinned it out with the workshop. Had to ugly it up a bit. Did this test on it, and the knife wasn't centered. A few things... It was mainly the knife that sort of makes this a forgettable steel to me, because really, on paper, for a non-powder steel, it's actually excellent. Uh, LC200N. Oh, I've tested this so many times. My Spider Chef, Shannon Steels. Um, gonna do my Caribbean as well. LC200N is probably my favorite steel. It's not the king of edge retention, but with my crazy KME edges, I can get it up to 550 cuts with a 16 degree super mirror polished. But generally, even with your most basic of workshop edges, 226 for a basically rust proof steel. Pretty damn good, if you ask me. LC200N. Not a powder steel either, but it's made with some fancy other process, so, you know, it's not just your standard, um, you know, ingot steel, you know, forged, whatever it is. Um, it's made with some kind of electro flak flat technology or something. So, but anyway, um, for what it is, and, you know, for its increasing availability, excellent stuff. I like it a lot. M390, probably the best pocket knife steel overall. It's got really great results. Um, even with basic uh, workshop edges, it's getting 334 cuts, 309 cuts from Wii steels, uh, Wii knives and line steel. Um, steel wheel cut jack is the one that I really, no, the Modus is one I really tested it extensively on. Got it up to 810 cuts and it was stable still at 11.5 degrees. Crazy stuff. Um, and then just even your basic lance gear, just 550 cuts, 425 cuts, 450 cuts. That's a lot of cuts. Like, regardless of what you seem to do with it, Really, really good stuff, M390. Um, and yeah, the other steels, the other named steels, like the 20 CVs and the two four piece, probably can do the same stuff. It's just M390 has been the one that I've had. So there you go. But yeah, for overall toughness, edge retention, and stainlessness as well, um, pretty good. M390, probably the best. Just if you had to just pick one, you'd say, yeah, just that's the safest one. Not gonna rust on you. I mean, K390 will probably last a bit longer, but. M390, you're not going to have to do much to it. And it's kind of easy to sharpen as well. well. Not easy, but not hard to sharpen like a lot of the other high-speed ones are. M390 gets the seal of approval. Alrighty, back again. M4 is the next steel. M4 is another favorite of mine. It doesn't hold against rust very well. It tarnishes, but it's in my Spyderco advocate at the moment, which is becoming one of my favorite Spydercos despite its flaws. My Spyderco Mantra, my Benchmade Contego. I've tested this steel a fair few times. 
Um, my first M4 test was a bit weird. I, it got lower than it should have. Uh, I don't think, it was probably the third or fourth test I did. Um, I reckon I didn't work sharp it properly. That's all I can think of. The steel was, too, it's a really hard steel to work sharp. I don't think, I sh if I'd studied the edge it would have been a bit different because concurrent tests, even with the same knife, have gotten much, much better results. So you're thinking like, with the Spyderco Mantra, the same model of knife, I got it up to 700 cuts with a toothy KME finished edge at 15 degrees. That's in uh, in crazy. That's incredible. Um, but yeah, very good stuff. Um, 500 with a polished edge even. Um, yeah, I mean, I look at my first one, it's a bit like, uh, I don't know. That doesn't seem right. I reckon that's my fuck up rather than... And that's why the ones I've done single tests of, I don't put too much stock in. Uh, it gives me a first impression, as I say, but... Give me a time, sometimes I need time to iron shit out. And especially back in the old days when I was just starting out, back in 2016, two years of this. What? But yeah, Benchmade Contego, 340 cuts on the Tormac, 280 on the Workshop. Um, M4 from a Mantra again, well, Lansky, 17 degrees, 489 cuts. You're looking at a pretty heavy hitter in terms of edge retention. Some of these, I've got, there's a couple of crazy numbers which I'll get to later, but. Um, in terms of just your basics, um, M4 is for an old steel, for a steel that's pretty widely available and not super expensive generally, you're going to get pretty high bang for the buck. Uh, I think K390 cuts it just a little bit when you put the right edges on it, but um, overall, pretty happy with M4. If you've got an M4 knife, just keep it oiled and um, yeah. I, I, you know what, I know it didn't last as long polished, but I think I still like it polished because it seems to perform okay polished anyway. Uh, well, it did 500 cuts polished, 700 of course, but in polished edges, man, they look good. Maximet. I had two different Spyderco Manix 2s and I did two different tests. The still current king of workshop and workshop 20 degree angles is Maximet. I never rex 121 with workshop, never got that far. Still got my Rex knife, maybe I'll do it one day, but, you know, who knows. Um, but yeah, Maximet got 563 cuts with a workshop edge, which is pretty crazy. Like, if you're thinking uh, a V-edge got, you know, 500 out of polished M4 for a very... What is... The workshop edge isn't that great. It's very... It's sharp, but it's not that super fine edge. It's like a good working edge. Crazy result from that. Uh, and then 810 using Lansky, that was a painful sharpening, I tell you. 810 cuts with a 17 degree Lansky edge. I, would, I don't have my maximum knife anymore, but when I get one back, which I will do, I'm going to put a KME proper 600 grit edge on it, and I reckon it'll top a thousand easily. Maximet's got a crazy recipe to it, a lot of weird stuff in it, a lot of good stuff in it to make good, rough carbides. Uh, should do the trick. And you know what, you can, if you want to see more adventures with Maximet, check out Big Brown there. He's shown that it's pretty tough stuff as well, so, good. Now, some Chinese D2 from Y-Start. Uh, I'm very dubious of a lot of the China D2, that's for sure. Um, this got, I couldn't get good results from it. 42, 45, I tested it twice on the workshop. Just no good, I don't know. It just didn't seem like it was D2. I, I felt there was probably some kind of cheap stainless. I, uh, I don't know. More carbon steel on a uh, Scandi Edge, 133 cuts. Uh, again, Scandi Edges are difficult for me. I can't quite um, you know, compare them easily. and I steer away from a little bit as much as people want to really want to see. I get asked a lot, but it's just not something I'm happy to compare. As happy as I am, I'm a bit happy to compare my other stuff to each other and to other people's stuff. N690, I don't know. N690, you pay a lot for sometimes. This is my only problem with it. Cut these European high-end knife makers like Fox and stuff, and Viper, they're often asking, you know, $300 for N690 knives. Um, and yeah, eventually, well, my Spyderco Pingo in an N690 got 87 cuts on the workshop, which, you know, for that price of knife is probably fine. It's VG10-esque, maybe even slightly better. N695 on the other hand, well, that was an that was just that knife was a demonstration of how edge angle matters. So N695 cut 60 with its factory edge, and I was like, oh yeah, it's about right, I guess. With a Lansky edge, it got to 100 at 20 degrees per side, and you know I was thinking oh, I still survive. This is on my Cuterman survival knife, thinking oh it's still cool, and then I dialed it to a 12 degree, a massive jump up to 12 degrees per side. 
um, and it cut 410 times. So you're looking at a really fine grained, tough steel that can hold a crazy angle for a good long time. So lots of steels have their strengths. Maybe some of them I'm just yet to find. N695 is definitely one of them. Right, 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 Nylux. Good performing steel, only had one knife in it, the Lion Steel T5. Really nice knife, but it's one of those five inch survival knives. I just go through them like underpants. I, um, I always have one, but I don't know. You know what I've just done? I sold my survival knives, my GSO. I don't know, you know, I, ah, that was, that knife I was just more getting annoyed at, um, just the whole thing, like the whole, um, I just kept getting these emails about it because I said the wrong thing in the reviews. It was really weird. Um, I got some comments. Comments is fine. But man, as I said before, you start getting emails, it just, ugh. I was just like, I'm just going to get another knife, man. Like, I don't know. It's, uh, 3V 5 inch knives. They're not, they're not uncommon. Um, I've still got my 4V Bark River Kefart. I've still got, and really, when I actually go out for myself, this is the knife I take. This is a 12C27 stainless um, dealy from Grace. And just because. Hand if it's my hand perfectly, and it's a tall, thin knife for slicing, because that's what I do with my camp knives. Anyway, I digress, but yeah. Moving on, moving on. So, uh, yeah, and the Nylox was great on the line, still T5, how did I get there? Um, and a good knife, a bit thick behind the edge. I remember that when I workshopped it, it took off a lot of steel, and it actually went through a workshop belt or two, because it's pretty D2-esque steel Nylox. It's, um, I think it is just a modified D2. Was pretty stainless, got 135 cuts with it on the workshop edge, which was better than I would had with D2 at that point. Um, so yeah, Nylox is definitely good stuff. It, kind of a rare steel, not super common. I don't think anyone seeks it out really, but um, if you get it, if you come across it, it's good. Rex 121, uh, this is, they say it's almost not a steel. It's almost just a different type of carbide. Um, it's got carbon in it, but it's got so much tungsten and so much of everything else in it too. I think it's got like 4% niobium, which is pretty strange. Niobium's an odd element. Um, yeah, this knife has done some crazy stuff. When I first got it and I put, a, I put my own edge on it, my um, Lansky edge, uh, it was, yeah, Lansky, 950 cuts, which just blew away everything else that I had before. Blew away Maximet by, you know, a fair margin, 150 odd cuts. And then when I sent it away and got it professionally sharpened to 13 degrees per side, mind you, with a workshop Ken Onion grinder to a reasonable 3,000 grit polish, 1,350 cuts. <laughs> Just ridiculous. No, 1,300. 1,300 cuts. Ridiculous. Um, there's just, and it's still, it's, I reckon this would still be. And this, I haven't touched it up, I don't think, since still pretty damn sharp like this this is your proper space steel this is nuts um, there's probably stuff that's about as good as this I've got some 125 V coming soon I might give it a run I don't know but we'll see Rex 121 is crazy um, RWL 34 just had one I've got one knife in it my uh, full hardy knives which I'm still getting to reviewing really um, my full hardy knives it's a custom knife RWL is a really common custom knife steel Machinable, available. They use it to make damask steel as well. It's often the damask steel steel. Um, so you're looking at um, like a pretty good basic level powder steel. Probably going to hold an edge about as long as S30V. What did it do for me? RWL did 186 on a workshop edge. So yeah, S30V ish, but then it's got those great toughness attributes for outdoor knives too. So I'd give it the two thumbs up. Uh, where are we? S110V. I need to investigate this one a little bit more. It's starting to rain. I need to investigate 110V a little bit more. Um, I need to do some toothy edges with it a little bit longer. So, um, well I need to do toothy versus mirror because it gets great results for me on a workshop. Um, so we've got 281, 295 with workshop edges. And those are two different knives with a Mannix and a paramilitary. And then when I landskied to a rough finish at 17 degrees, cut 500 times. So you're thinking K390 did a little bit more than that, but um, as for a stainless steel and for such an available stainless steel now, thanks to Spyderco, uh, one of the heavy hitters for sure. I need to do KME rough versus mirror and I will do it. As I've said a few times though, my arm is not the best anymore. I'm getting a bit of um, 
bit of an injury from doing all this so much. So I'm just going to be, I've got some advice, it's fine, I'm not going to stop entirely, but I'm just doing some other exercises to get other parts of my arm developed because, um, yeah, I'm just getting a little bit of, um, these tendons here are getting yeah, a little bit overused from this cut testing, which is ridiculous. Imagine if I did myself a long-term mischief from <laughs> this. Oh, that's almost a Darwin Award. Anyway, so yeah, that's it's going to happen, but it might just be some time. S30V. I've tested it in one, two, three, four, five different, no, six different knives because there's two different benchmates. Yes, um, great stuff for your basic stainless steel. Uh, in most of your knives these days, there's no reason to get rid of S30V. It's still just great. They say it's chippy when you're using it in outdoor knives and you know at more extreme edges, but I haven't really found that too much. I haven't had any complaints with S30V. Highest I've got it is with a 16 degree polished KME edge to 330 cuts. Was a bit better polished than Toothy. Has some vanadium in it, so the Toothy, you know, didn't perform terribly, but. Once the vanadium gets higher though, I think you find the toothy starts to perform better. That's just from what I've seen so far. Uh, S35VN. So, one, two, three, four, five, six different knives. Yeah, six different knives with S35VN. The one that was, you know, the, the weird one was the um, ZT0909 and the 0220. They were soft, like I just couldn't get them to hold an edge well. Uh, and then in response to the people saying, you know, that it was bullshit, I then and got went and got a zero uh, two twenty, no, a zero, yeah, zero two twenty, and it was much better. So the zero two twenty I got to with a workshop edge one hundred ninety four cuts. So that's about what I'd expect because that was matching up with what Kaiser did, with what um, Chris Reeve did. You're looking at between the high 100s and the low 200s. So from anywhere from 180 to 210 cuts of rope before it no longer slices paper seems to be about what uh, Z, uh, uh, sorry, S35VN will do for you. Plus it's tough, you can use it in fixed blades. It's great still. I think LMAX does everything a little bit better, but uh, S35 is so common these days. It's a really good, if you want to pick a steel to be common, it's a good one to pick for sure. I realized at this point that I'd left that S90V. S90V is a really good performer somewhere between, say, your um, S110Vs and maybe down to your you know, LMAXs or your XHP. It sort of seems to be between those two there. So I've only tested two knives in it. Um, it's kind of difficult to sharpen. feels very... I don't really notice that much different between it and S110V. It's uh, really good stuff. So it had an Benchmade Altitude and an Spydeco Nave. So two different companies, both did admirably well, as you can see from the results. Right, super gold powder steel on my Falk Niven. Falk, this is Falk Niven's like flashy steel. There's this and 3G. I'm not sure what the difference is between them. Haven't tested 3G. This is great stuff. Um, it's, you know, usually comes laminated. I think it's got a you know, fair amount of non-stainlessness to it. Um, but yeah, it, with Falk Niven's convex edges especially, it's going to do really, really well. Nice, nice steel. SGPS. Just a first impression so far. Got 291 cups on the workshop with me. Like the SGPS, for sure. Slatten the steel. I did a pretty extensive investigative video into Slatner. I got my SR11 in it, and Slatner is okay. It's D2-ish. Um, but they, again, lines still charge a whole lot for it in knives like the Kerr and everything like that. Um, I would prefer they use something a little bit better myself um, because, you know, I got it to 182 with a Lansky edge at 20 degrees, which maybe if I thinned it out, I might get it over 200. I don't know. just didn't really kick any massive goals for me to make it a memorable steel. It's a fine steel, but just not as great as it maybe as you, maybe a company like Lions still could manage. Like they use, they use a lot of uh, M390. I don't know why they chose that for their... Uh, SR range, maybe because it's a hard use steel. It's it's they say it's D2 with a bit of extra toughness in it, so I don't know. I don't know. Cases true sharp. Oh no. Jeez, I skipped. I skipped like SK5. How could I do that? Um, SK5 is pretty basic carbon steel. Um, cut 58 times on a Lansky edge, no, on a workshop edge for me. Uh, SK5 is like 5160, geared more towards being tough. So it's what you'd expect from a cheap steel, carbon steel. Mainly tough steel, so there you go. 
Um, so some I tr tried some random stainlesses from uh, one from a Mueller hunter knife and one from an eBay knife. This is again just that rule of if your knife just says stainless on it, it's going to be shit steel. Probably not going to be heat treated for being a knife steel. So don't put too much stock in the stainless steel for sure. True Sharp by Case. Uh, I tested this versus their CV. It was almost as good. I used to think it was just your garbage stainless. Seems to be something in True Sharp at the very least. Um, got between 65 and 60 cuts, a few different times on the workshop edge. Pretty good. Um, Vanitas 4. Uh, they say it's fairly similar to 4V. And yeah, my results are pretty good. Uh, 225 for the workshop edge, 294 with a toothy V grind edge. It's fine. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, it was in my 0180, which again, like so many of these knives about their size, I've long since sold. Um, I enjoyed the knife, I enjoyed the steel. Uh, Vanitas 4 is, seems like a 3D type steel with slightly boosted edge retention, so. Cool with that, it's cool with me. Vanex. Oh, I did such, had such fun with my Vanex. Vanex super clean. Um, so I got um, Vanax and Z Finit, which are both nitrogen steels. You can see these videos quite recently. I did Vanax, and um, Vanax was uh, the better of the two. It is an expensive steel, though. Vanax costs a lot of money to get a knife made in it. Uh, I got it up to with a 13 degree edge, 790 cuts for a stain-free steel, pretty much. And you can see how stain-free it was in my stainless testing. Didn't it leach anything into the water. Um, and yeah, so I got from between. Well, I think my basic test was, where are we? So, my Vanex, it started at 300 with a workshop edge, which is a great place to start. And then moving up in the types of edges, so 17 toothy, 550 cuts. 17 polished, 680 cuts. Super steep at 13 degrees, 790. Pretty good. Pretty good stuff indeed. So for stainless steel that is tough, you know what, Vanax could well be the best of the steels, but it's just so expensive and so rarely seen that I'm still gonna stick with saying M390 is, but Vanax is definitely up there for a basic steel for everyone, for sure. It wasn't even hard to sharpen, great stuff. Uh, VG1 from Cold Steel, uh, cut about as long as VG10. Um, <laughs> so uh, 73 cuts with a work sharp edge, no worries. Uh, then VG10 I've tested with one, two, three, four, five, six different knives. With the workshop edge, it gets between 73 and 83. And then moving it up through Lansky, got it to 115 uh, on a Delica. And then my Kaiser V3, when I took it to 12 degrees, it got to 340 cuts. Pretty good for VG10, classic old VG10. It's just really fine grained and kind of tough. So, um... Well, at least at that heat treatment it was anyway. So it was good enough to hold a really thin edge for a good long time, 340 cuts. Um, you know, that's that's getting super steel performance out of a pretty widely available, you know, pretty medium quality steel. So good job. Victorinox's steel is not particularly impressive with the um, uh, edge retention. So you've got a uh, 40, 36, 38, uh, I got it to 90 when I put a Tormek edge on it, um, which is the really steep ones. But yeah, Victorinox steel is not made for lasting a long time at the edge. It's made for sitting in cupboards and not rusting away because they're for gift knives that people probably don't actually use. Or knives that you keep in your keys amongst all your pocket crud. Um, and yeah, they're just so when you go and get the knife again, it's not all rusted to crap. And that's, that's what they want and that's fine with me. It's tough, it's easy to sharpen. It's a, just a, it's a steel for a different purpose than cutting for ages, so all good. Uh, X12MF was on the Kizilya Feline, a D2 variant. They held it edge a little bit, a little bit less than D2. Really highly stainless though. I ended up just breaking that Feline when I was battening it though. It wasn't particularly tough. And then ZDP 189. No, skipped XHP. How could I do that? How could I do that? XHP is excellent. It's got a. Um, uh, pretty wide, or oh, it's actually, I was going to say it's pretty widely available, but not so much anymore. Cold Steel are not using it. Um, but it, when it was on all the Cold Steels, it was a great buy. It held its edge longer than the S35 and the S30Vs and that sort of thing. Um, I could get crazy um, edge retention on it. It got it to 600 with a skinny edge on the Tormek. Lansky edges got to 370. XHP is that 
powdered D2 that is powdered in the, using the proper attributes, put a bit of extra stuff in it to make it a really, really good steel. So XHP, one of my faves, great stuff. ZDP-189, another great steel. Um, high carbon content, using lots of carbon and chromium to make nice little fierce carbides. What have I got ZDP to? So far I've got it to 450. I reckon I could get it higher using different means. Um, where are we? So yeah, I polished it using the Lansky, got it to 450. Workshop hedges have been 330, 336. Factory edge on the Spyderco Dragonfly was 380. So ZDP, man, no complaints. It's a different steel to a lot of the other ones. It's not as complex in terms of its ingredients, but um, yeah, pretty happy. So, and then the last one is the ZT S35VNs, which I've kind of got separate because they're a bit of a weird anomaly, sort of just couldn't get them sharp, but I think it's turned a corner and I think that was just a couple of freaky knives. I mean, ZT is struggling. They've got this lock thing at the moment where their locks fail if you whack them. Whether or not that's part of your daily use to do that, it's still kind of interesting. Um, yeah, but this seems like the steel at least has come good. Um, the 0220 that I tested after all these was fine and probably is on the to-do list to get the um, ZT steels out and doing a bit more extensive testing with them because I think it's fair. It's fair. So that's all me steels so far. Hope you've been had an okay time listening to me talk about it. I'm just going to wrap up with a few final thoughts. All right, so that's everything I've done so far. Um, I'm getting pretty happy with my collection of work. I still am in no way saying that I know exactly how much better a steel is than another steel. All I can have is my opinion based on the tests that I've done. That's all I've ever really hoped for is saying when I tell you how I feel about a steel, at least with my point of view, it's somewhat quantifiable. So you can actually look and say, oh, this is why he thinks that way because he's done these tests. I just, I always wanted to be a, a little bit more um, verifiable than just random people saying, nah, that's bullshit, M M4 lasts longer than Maximet because I had my knife and it, I feel like it lasted longer. Like, I always just wanted to be a little bit more than that. I like to be able to see things. Um, I had a couple, I had a comment that was just maybe a bit flat. It was from one of my regular viewers as well. Um, a little, you know, and it's a name that I'd seen before and it was like, hey, I did your test on AUS8 and it's lasting heaps longer. Is, your, is, is my favorite cut testing channel a lie or something like that? And I was like, it just had, I had so many questions and I commented and I don't think he's responded so far. It's one of my older videos, I have to go back. But like, if you're doing a test, don't expect it to be the same as my test. What you need to do, do your test, do it the same way and start doing that same test versus different steels. What I'm interested in is in your test is if, say if you do crew wear and then you do Rex and Rex is, you know, three times longer lasting than crew wear, like it is with my testing, sort of three or two, twice as long. So yeah, if you get 950 and then 400 with, um, if I've got that 950 and 400 with crew wear, so it's, you know, one and a half times better. So if you do your cardboard test or whatever test you're doing or your different rope push cut test, if your Rex lasts longer than your crew wear to about that margin, that's when all this starts to link up. So. I don't know, I feel like I'm explaining this a lot, but then every now and then I just get a bit confounded. And the most important thing to remember is that this is just the internet, and it's not super important or super serious. I do hope I'm showing you that there are differences to these things. Um, I think the overall message really is that um, as long as you're not paying too much, even the basic steels are fine. Um, you can do things to the basic steels to make them perform better. Um, as long as you're not getting a steel that just says stainless on it, that is not really made to be a cutlery steel, you're probably going to get something that is workable. Just don't pay too much for things. All I want to sort of draw attention to, I guess, is that say if, and you'll see this in a lot of the European companies, Viper will be selling a knife that's an N690, or say Extreme Ratio will sell an N690 knife, and then Bark River will sell a 3V knife. Um, and the Bark River will probably even be cheaper than the Extreme knife. If you're going after materials, there will be a benefit to that Bark River in terms of saving money and also having better performance. It's kind of what I'm getting at. So that's, that's kind of the more basic things I'm hoping to show first. If you want to really look at my work and take nuances from it, then that's fine. Go for it. I'd suggest using a few other sources too, but whatever. Um, yeah, that's kind of what I'm mainly after. So yeah. Look, in terms of stills that I'm still looking to do, 
I've done a lot of them. Like there's a, there's not too many steels that I haven't tested. There's always some new cutting edge steel, and I'll get to them when I get to them. Got some 125V coming. I need to do mirror versus polished on so mirror versus coarse on the S110V. I've had that a few times requested, uh, and then I have to do some more ZT steel, some more ZT zero uh, S35VN. I think just to be fair. Um, but apart from that, I'm pretty happy with where I'm standing. These are just going to become a little bit more sporadic. I'm just getting a bit of an RSI in my shoulder, and it's not. It's not around all the time, all the time. So I'm not too stressed about it, but I just, I definitely need, I've had some advice and I definitely need to just calm the farm just a little bit. I was doing like one of these a day. You got to realize I am that spectrum type personality where this is a real, um, I'm just as compelled to do this as you are to watch them probably. Like I get a real excitement <laughs> when I get a new steel. I'm like, I often, this is really embarrassing, but I often struggle. I, I go to bed, you know, when you, excited about the next day and you go to bed and you that's how I feel when I'm doing these when I know I've got one of these tests the next day so trust me I love doing these but I need to take care of myself and just chill out just a little tiny bit um so yeah they'll be a little bit less sporadic I must say and yeah um I get often asked a lot to do hey can you do this still can you do this still can you do this still just hold up hold up please I'll get there trust me but just hold up um and yeah so I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you're enjoying this, the channel. There'll be some other stuff coming up soon. And my Patreons, I can't thank them enough. I, I dropped like $300 on a rope last month because I've had all this Fanex stuff coming. The patrons help so much with all that. Plus now I've got Cami, it's buying films, it's buying stuff. So look, if you really enjoy this and you really want to help out, then my Patreon's the best way to do it rather than sending me knives because it actually ends up costing me money sending them back and, and just the worry about them. I worry about them getting back. I like, I see them on my table and I have to get to them. And it increases my stress. <laughs> so sending knives isn't, you know, if it's you've got some crazy exotic seal that I haven't tested yet, I'll probably be all like, yeah, fuck it, send it, we'll do it. But um, yeah, if you really want to help, I mean... I don't expect you to, but you can Patreon if you want. But otherwise, just leave a like and leave a good comment. That sort of stuff might get my videos seen a bit more. Um, I'm happy with how much I'm getting watched, but I'm always happy to get watched a little bit more. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I'm pretty happy with how things are going, apart from having a bit of a sore arm. But I'm doing exercises, I'm doing I'm at the gym, I'm doing like, you know, different things at different angles to make it so like, you know, I'm not over developing one part of my arm, so it's all good. It'll all be fine. And there'll be more tests to come, I'm sure. Stay tuned. Probably I do one of these about yearly now, I guess. Or six monthly or something. So stay tuned for more cut tests, more videos in general. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you for sticking by me for this really long-ass video. But i got a feeling there's a certain type of people who just eat this shit up. Because I'm one of them. Alright, I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Goodbye. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road back again Your heart is true You're the pal and a confidant And if you threw a party